This morning, we continue in our sermon series entitled, It's Okay to Ask. If you missed us last week, that's okay. But last week, we asked the question, am I accepted? And we heard the story of a woman who, having been caught in adultery, was brought before Jesus and all the teachers of the law. And out of a tremendous act of grace and mercy, Jesus stands up for her and answers the question, am I accepted, with a resound yes. Jesus accepts her in the midst of all of her flaws and failures and shortcomings. And that's echoed to us as well. Jesus accepts us just the way we are, but he expects us to grow from where we are. And that's the two-sided coin of grace and truth. This morning, we ask another question, not of ourselves, but instead we ask a question of God. This morning, we ask the question, where is God? And that seems like a fitting question for this season of life. We ask the question, where is God in the midst of fear and anxiety, with all that's going on with the public health issue of the coronavirus, with all the, the, the chaos that's going around the world, and even in our own homes, we ask, where in the world is God in all of this? But God has an answer for us. Just as he answered with authority last week, he will answer with authority for today. So I'll give you a second to get a Bible if you have one near you. We're going to be going to uh, John's Gospel, and we're going to be uh, looking at John 1, 1 through 5, as well as verse 14. So as you make your way to your Bible, would you quiet your hearts and join me in a word of prayer. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. It's through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Hear now a word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing had come into being. And what has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, filled with grace and truth. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You just heard a small portion of one of the most famous passages in all of Scripture. You just heard what's called the prologue to John's Gospel. And it, in its essence, it is the story of God putting on flesh in the person of Jesus and living among us. If you think about it, it's actually an echo of the creation story in Genesis 1. But that's for another sermon and another conversation over a cup of coffee. John's gospel is a beautiful gospel. It is filled with analogy, inside analogy, inside analogy. It's filled with imagery and allegory beyond our wildest imaginations. But in the midst of that, it can be a bit confusing, especially when we're trying to answer the question, where is God? Hear it again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So the Word is a person, yes. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. So the Word was God, and the Word on, put on flesh. The Word is Jesus, yes. That's a lot to wrap our minds around on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m., but to answer the question, where is God, in the context of the prologue of John's gospel, in the most simplest way, it would be to say this. 
God put on flesh in the form of Jesus and showed up to his people. God showed up in the person of Jesus in the way that he spoke truth in a countercultural world. God showed up in the person of Jesus by taking care of the orphan and the widow and the poor. God showed up in the person of Jesus to speak truth to power, to walk on water, to multiply the fish and the loaves, and to call a people for repentance of sins. God showed up in the person of Jesus so many years ago. So where is God? God is in the person of Jesus. But here's the thing. Doesn't that kind of feel like yesterday's answer? God showed up, past tense, in the person of Jesus thousands of years ago. But that doesn't mean that God stops showing up today. God can still answer the question, where is God, in today's context, but it's a little bit different of an answer. And so if you're a note taker, I'd write this simple phrase down. God shows up today through his people. God showed up yesterday and thousands of years ago through the person of Jesus in the flesh. But today, tomorrow, and forevermore, God will continue to show up by the power of the Holy Spirit through his church. God shows up when the church takes care of the orphan, the widow, and the poor. God shows up in the way that his word is proclaimed and it pierces the hardened heart of someone. God shows up when love is extended beyond these four walls and it is, bring, it is bringing about reconciliation and redemption and hope to a lost and broken world. God showed up thousands of years ago in the person of Jesus, but God still shows up today through his people. And so now I want to turn the question to you. How can you illuminate the presence of God to someone today? How can you help open the eyes of someone to the presence of God today? How can you point someone else to be aware to the presence of God today? Maybe it's through a, a simple handwritten card to someone recovering from surgery and letting them know you're praying for them for a speedy recovery. Maybe it's through a simple phone call and an invitation to the person who never gets the invitation to sit down for a cup of coffee or to come over for din dinner after all of this public health issue settles down. Or maybe it's through a service project around the world or even just across the street to show the presence and the love of God to someone who may never encounter, encounter it or be aware to it. So as you continue in this season of Lent, this season of reflection, this season of preparation while Christ is journeying towards Calvary's cross, may you be reminded and encouraged that God showed up thousands of years ago in the form of Jesus, but God still shows up today and he shows up through his people. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let all God's people say, Amen. Before we conclude our time this morning, it seems appropriate that we spend some time in prayer. We want to spend time praying uh, for our community members, our leaders, our national leaders, our global leaders as we seek to respond to this public health issue of the coronavirus. We want to pray for our elderly and our little ones. We want to pray for our loved ones who are uh, the most uh, exposed to this coronavirus and the, the issues that come with it. We want to pray uh, for our communities, for our schools, for the students and families in our school systems that, that need uh, some extra food during this time. So we pray that, that we would be a place of, of healing for them. So with all that's going on, would you quiet your hearts and join me in prayer? God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for the word written, the Bible, 
And we give thanks for the word made flesh in Jesus. God, we give you thanks for your faithful presence that it's never left us. That though Christ ascends and sits on the right hand of you right now, we know that the presence of God by the power of the Holy Spirit is still palpable today through the people of God. And so God, we pray for your people. We pray for your people who are struggling, who are living in fear. We pray for your people who are caring, uh, caring for others in the medical field. We pray for our community leaders and our national leaders, that they would be uh, making wise decisions, that they'd be seeking the kingdom of God first. We pray, Lord, for our missionaries across the street and around the globe, that they would uh, have courage to continue to spread the gospel to one more heart, one more town, and one more village. God, we, we pray for those in our community who are struggling with addiction or depression or disease. In a time that's so easy to be isolated, we pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are hungry for connection. And we pray that the church would be mobilized in any way, shape, or form so we could bring about connection to the church and to you. We pray, Lord, for those in our communities who have needs, financial needs, physical needs, emotional, mental, spiritual needs. We lift them all up to you, God. And we pray again that the church would somehow be mobilized in any way, shape, or form to be a beacon of hope and truth and grace and mercy and light in this very odd and unusual time. And God, we pray and we echo the prologue to John's gospel that in these, these seemingly dark times, we pray that we would remember that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Send your spirit upon us so that we may live in this truth, assurance, and comfort that as we live in the light of Jesus, no darkness will ever overcome us. It's in the name of Jesus and for the redemption of the world we pray. Let all God's people say, Amen. Grace and peace and stay safe.